Okay, so in this video, we will have a quick look at the geometry and solving linear systems. We will consider two examples, one and one equation, two variables, then two equations, two variables. So take the following equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6. Let's first algebraically solve this linear equation. We'll isolate for x, and so 2x is equal to negative 3y plus 6 divided by 2, x is negative 3 over 2y plus 3. So as we've seen before, now for any y value of our choice, x must be negative 3 half y plus 3, and so y is a free variable, so it becomes a parameter, we can say t, then x must be negative 3 half t plus 3. And again, we specifically state that t can take on any real value of our choice. We can do a little better if you remember. We can cancel this fraction if we replace t by 2t. So y is 2t, and x will become, I'll write the constant term first, 3, minus 3, 2t over 2 is simply t, so minus 3t. And again, t is allowed to range over all real numbers. So this is our solution set. So, given any value of t, if you replace y by 2t and x by 3 minus 3t, you have a solution to this equation. So this is solving the linear equation algebraically. Let's look now at the geometry in this solution. To solve the linear equation algebraically, we isolated x as a function of y. Now, for the geometry, it may be more familiar to isolate for y as a function of x. So let's do so. So we'll have then 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 6, divide by 3, and y is now negative 2 over 3, x plus 2. And so you see that this equation is equivalent to the original linear equation. And this should look more familiar. y is equal to a multiple of x plus 2. This is the equation of a line in the xy plane. So we have our x-axis, our y-axis, and we can look at the y-intercept when x is 0, y is positive 2, and the slope, the multiple of x is negative 2 thirds, so it's a negative slope, therefore we'll have a line that is decreasing. And now we can look back and say, okay, geometrically, this linear equation, which in this form is equivalent, is the equation of a line in the xy plane. Well, once we solved algebraically this equation, what have we found? Well, if you think of it, a point is on this line, if and only if it is a solution of this equation, if and only if it is a solution to the original equation. But we have found all solutions to this equation, so we have therefore found all solutions to this equation. Therefore, all of these solutions are points on the line. So, if you take, say, t to be equal to 1, then you'll get the point 3 minus 3, which is 0, x is 0, y equals 2 times 1 which is 2, and so you see that this point is when t is equal to 1. We could take t to be, say, negative 1, then we'll have y is negative 2, negative 1 times negative 3 is plus 3, so 3 plus 3 is 6. As we've said, y would be negative 2. And so we get this point when t is negative 1. And as you take any choice of t from the real numbers, you will get a different point on this line. And so you see that when you solve a linear equation in two variables, algebraically, 
what you have found is a way to parameterize every given point on this line. Choose any real value you want, plug it back in, and you get the coordinates of a point on the line whose equation is the original linear equation. Let's see what happens now if we solve two linear equations simultaneously. So a linear system of two equations, and we will stick with two variables. So we'll keep our original equation, and we'll add a second equation. So now here's the linear system. 2x plus 3y equals 6. And we'll add the equation 4x plus 5y equals 15. So let's first solve this linear system algebraically, and then we'll ask what does the solution mean geometrically? We'll find that we have a unique solution. So let's isolate x from the first, the second equation as a function of y. And so if we do so, we'll get 4x equals negative 5y plus 15 divided by 4x is negative 5 quarters y plus 15 over 4. We can substitute this back now in the first equation. So we'll get 2 times x, so 2 times this. So we'll get negative 5 over 2y plus 15 over 2 plus 3y. And this equals 6. Now we have one equation, one variable. We can easily solve for y. So negative 5 over 2y, 3 over 2 is 6 over 2. And let's send the constant term on the right-hand side. Well, 6 over 2 plus 5 over 2 is 1 half. So we get 1 half times y equals 6 is 12 over 2. 12 minus 15 is negative 3 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2, and so y is negative 3. So we have the y value. Well, we now want to solve for x, so we substitute backwards into the first equation that we have solved for, x is a function of y, and so x will become negative 15 over 4 times y, which is negative 3, so we get 15 over 4, plus 15 over 4. Well, this gives us 30 over 4. Common factor of 2. So it's 15 over 2. If you want in decimals, this is 7.5. And so now we have our unique solution. The unique solution to this linear system is x equals 7.5, or 15 over 2 and y equals negative 3. So now we have solved the system algebraically. The only value of x and y that solve simultaneously both equations are x equals 7.5, y equals negative 3. Let's see now the geometric interpretation of this algebraic solution. As we've done in the previous case, we will now isolate in both equations y as a function of x to make the equations look more familiar geometrically. If we do so, then we'll get 3y equals negative 2x plus 6 from the first equation. And we'll get from the second equation 5y equals negative 4x plus 15. Divide by 3, divide by 5. So the first equation becomes y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. And the second equation becomes y equals negative 4 over 5 x plus 3. And then we can see, this looks more familiar, both equations are equations of lines in the xy plane. y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. Let's graph both lines and see what the solution represents geometrically.
let us remind ourselves that the solution was 7.5 for x and negative 3 for y. Let's look at the y-intercept. The first line when x is 0, the y-value is 2. The second line when x is 0, the y-value is 3. So the first line crosses the y-axis at 2, the second line crosses the y-axis at 3. Now look at the slopes. Both have negative slopes, so they're both decreasing lines, but 4 over 5 is bigger than 2 over 3, so the second line will be slightly steeper than the first line. So we can draw the first line. And then we'll draw the second line. As we've said, 4 over 5 is bigger than 2 over 3, so it will still have a negative slope, but slightly steeper. So it may look something like this. And now, you see that both lines, so if I call this, say, line 1, and I call this line 2, so this is line 1, uh, sorry, this is line 2, this one is line 1, and you see that both lines meet at a unique point. And now you may ask, well, what is that point? Hmm. Well, we've just found it. If you think of it, the point of intersection between these two lines is a point that lies simultaneously on line 1 and on line 2. But a point can only be in a line if it satisfies, if it is a solution to the equation of the line. But those two equations are equivalent to the original linear system. And so a point can only be lying on the two lines if it solves both equations, therefore if it is a solution to the linear system. And so you see, when you have two equations and two variables, each equation represents a line in the xy plane, and when you look for a solution of the system, you're looking for a value of x and a value of y, therefore the coordinates of a point that lies simultaneously on the first line and on the second line. And now we know that this point has x-coordinate 7.5 and y-coordinates negative 3. And that's it. And so that's the geometry in solving a linear system in two variables and two equations. Each equation represents a line, so solving for this equation means finding points on this line, but simultaneously the points must also be on this line, and so we are intersecting two lines in the xy plane. And that's the geometry behind solving linear systems. Now you may wonder, well, if we add additional equations in two variables again, we'll simply be intersecting three lines. If you add a third equation, you'll be looking for the point of intersection between three lines. If you add a fourth equation between four lines and so forth. What's interesting is, what happens if we add, say, a third variable? What if we had equations in x, y, and z? Then you may wonder, well, is there a geometry taking place? And the answer is yes. In two variables, you are in the xy plane in two dimensions. If you add a third variable, now you will have three dimensions, so you will be in three-dimensional space. And solving linear systems in three variables is geometrically simply intersecting, and what we'll see later on, planes in three-dimensional space. And you may wonder, well, what if we have four variables? And we're solving linear systems in four variables. The answer is there's still geometry taking place you'll be intersecting different kind of shapes in now four-dimensional spaces. 
but this is something that we will cover later on in the course. But always keep this in mind. Whenever you are solving algebraically linear systems, you are also doing behind the curtain geometry. You are finding the point or points of intersection between different objects in space.